were really quite lucky to be selected as a Labour candidate uh, at a relatively young age. And in a sense, my time scale, you know, coincides with Margaret Blackwood's to a degree, you know, in the sense that uh, I was active uh, politically in the late 60s in Edinburgh. I was elected to Parliament in 1970. Uh, so that period really is from the late 60s and, you know, beyond 1970, really, Margaret Blackwood was was really emerging, was really developing her campaign. And I'm, let me emphasise, it was a totally non-party campaign. Indeed, I still don't know what Margaret Blackwood's politics were. And that was one of her strengths, by the way. You know, at the end of the day, you, you didn't want her to agree with you politically in terms of party, and, and, and I'm sure in other parties either. She was advocating the case for people with disability, and no one knew more about what life was like with a disability than she did. And, and by the way, she articulated that very well. And she was strong and determined. I mean, there, there, there was no, there was no dubia, dubiety in her position. And of course, she was absolutely right. And of course, history history's proven her to be right. But the things that, and the position she was taking then, of course, did seem radical then. It did seem to some people that this was asking rather a lot. But she, you know, her basic position was that, you know, disabled people should be able to live a full life just like a fully abled person. And that, that was really where she came from. And so that we had to organise our, our, our event, our affairs, both in terms of financial support, in terms of the buildings, in terms of uh, all the other things, in order to make a society where a disabled person being born into that society could hope to have the same achievements and have the same ambitions as an able-bodied person. And that was, that was really where she started from, which is very, very ambitious to achieve that. And we've made progress, obviously with more to do. But she, yeah, she was a key, a key element in, 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 and of course there was campaigns all over the country and at different levels. She was starting from the premise that, in fact, we should be aiming to create housing, create workplaces, create a, a welfare system, which meant that disabled people were not at a disadvantage insofar as you, you, one could achieve that. So you really, you're trying to create a, 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 a society create a situation where a disabled person would not be held back by their disability. That they, they could go on and do anything educationally, they could go on and do anything that they wanted in terms of their work. Obviously you know, one has to qualify that, but, but that I think was her contribution in a way that she didn't, she didn't just approach it from the point of view of what a bit of this and what a bit of that. She approached it from the point of view of a vision of creating a society where, uh, where a disabled person wasn't at such a disadvantage, indeed wasn't at a disadvantage at all, if that was possible. I remember Margaret Blackwood coming down to the House of Commons. I, I, I remember a group of them coming down to, 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 to meet us there in the House of Commons. Um, I can't remember a lot about you know, what was said, but all these things added up. I mean, in a sense, that's the way these campaigns impact. It's not one thing, it's a series of things. It's making the case, obviously having a strong case in the first place, which she did, making the case very clearly and organising a number of meetings and events which, which would attract attention, win support and get media coverage as well. And she, she had that gift. Um, but she was, also, she was also, I think, I think the fact that she was such a nice person and she was obviously you know, not in this for any, any glory. She wasn't looking for any publicity or anything. You know, that she'd, she'd come to the fore she obviously probably realised in the course of uh, a few years that really she was quite gifted at it and quite quite talented at it, and and what was you know her, her contributions were were appreciated and uh, and, and and respected. And I was a very young man then. I mean, I was elected at the age of 26, uh, so probably uh, probably you know my my late 20s when uh, I uh, really got to know her and uh, it was you know, she could phone me up and I could phone her up. I mean, we, we had a good a good dialogue and I think you know mutual respect. So working with her was like you said it was. Yeah, but a relationship based on mutual respect. I mean, yes, she, she was a great person to work with. I mean, because she, she she understood the cause, and she didn't, you know, she didn't, she didn't uh, expect, you know, this to be the only thing you were involved in. You know, she, she recognised this was one of a number of issues one was pursuing in the House of Commons, but it was a very important one, and, and I think, you know, we all owe her a great debt, frankly. I mean, she played a very important part in raising awareness, making the con link with the, you know, with the, the parliamentary process getting through to politicians that something more has to be done, which eventually it was done, of course. She was a very important person in the whole campaign, and it's an ongoing campaign, to take the necessary steps, whether it's legislation, whether it's benefits, whether it's 
buildings, workplaces, homes, to make the changes to give disabled people a better chance in life, to improve their, their, their quality of life. And she, she deserves to go into the history books as one of the people, and certainly as far as we in Scotland are concerned, one of the leading people, the key people, who made a real impact. Her legacy is the great progress that has been made. Yes, I mean, we should be proud of what she did, and, and it is her legacy, yes.